Hey guys, my name is Jade, and today we're gonna talk about managing your finances. Yo, I know that it sounds so scary. It sounds spookier than the scariest haunted house you've been to. Managing your finances, for me, was such a difficult topic because for me, I related to creating a budget to being miserable. I related looking at your bank account statements as looking at how you're gonna die, okay? Like, I, I felt like there was so much shame in what I spent in a week. Why would I wanna look back at it, right? But we're gonna make it easy because it doesn't need to be painful. And I found amazing techniques in the past few years of being fully self-employed, managing my own finances since I was 16. And I wanna share with you guys my tips and tricks. And don't worry, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a chill experience. Step one into creating a budget is to not create a budget in the beginning. If you don't know how much you spend in a month, figure that out, okay? So the first step is we're gonna figure out what your average spend is. My typical technique of doing this is just looking at the past three months of my bank statements or expenses and figuring out what the average monthly spend is. And if that's too scary for you to look at your bank statements and be like, oh my God, like, what am I looking at? Check out this app called Rocket Reach. <laughs> it's sponsored, I wish, I really love this app, but it's free. And basically it's a prettier way to look at your finances. For me, my average spend per month is around 5K a month. Now you can move on to stage two, which is creating a budget, okay? But don't move on until you've done stage one. I think what people struggle in the most is they automatically want to cut out a category of spending without knowing a, how much I spend in that category, and B, if they even want to. For example, we're going to create a budget. And say your budget is, you know, you've noticed you spend way too much money on food. But you like food. Food makes you happy. Food gives you fuel. Like for me, that's my relationship with food. I will spend more money on food than I will with shopping. Because that's what I care about. You don't want to take away from a budget that makes you happy. Cut the budget that doesn't serve you or you're willing to sacrifice. This concept is called money values. A good way to gauge what your money values are is to look at the categories of which you spend and rank your top three and then rank your least favorite three. So for example, for me, my top three is health, food, and travel. So I'm going to spend a lot more on these categories than my least favorite three, which is driving a fancy car, I don't care about that. Clothes and shopping, I don't really need to spend a ton of money on clothes. And the last category is beauty. I don't really spend a ton of money on like makeup products. I just kind of use what I have and I'm happy with it. So I remember when I was first starting to build my budget, I cut down a lot of shopping. I frankly didn't need to spend $50, $100 a week on shopping. I just need to spend what I needed to, which is like around $100 a month, which to me is like pretty reasonable. To you, that might be a lot, that might be little. Just do it based on me, okay? And like the whole goal with creating a budget is A, knowing how much you want to save. So for example, I want to say $500 a month, $300 a month, right? And then work backwards. If you shave off a few hundred dollars in each of these three categories, you can achieve that goal. It is a lot easier to save money if you're working toward a specific goal. So that kind of goes into my step three, which is creating money goals. Money goals for me are specific things you want to achieve with a deadline. I want to save up $20,000 in my emergency fund in six months. I want to pay off all my student loans by next year. I want to buy a house by 25. Do you know what I mean? Like you want to be specific with it because it's more motivating too. I remember when I was first saving money for my emergency fund, I wanted to hit $20,000 in my account by six months. The way I did that was just by putting that on my fucking wall and looking at it every day, which kind of motivated me to save that money. So I think you need to be honest with yourself and know what space you're in. If you have debt, I would personally go and focus on paying that off. If you're in a spot where you can't save money, maybe start with your emergency fund, creating a savings account just for emergencies. Or if you're in a place where you're kind of doing all of that, you want to invest in your future, maybe spend a couple hundred dollars a month investing into whatever valuables you're into, stocks, crypto, whatever. My second thing with money goals is create a separate account when you're saving money. If I saw $20,000 in my account just sitting there in my bank account, I would probably spend it. For those who are wondering, I use a bank called Alibank. There's a bunch of different like online banks you can sign up for free. You can use crypto. I know for different countries, there's like different regulations. But in the US, I use Ali and I use that as my secondary savings bank account where I earned a high interest every month. If you've never heard of a high yield savings account, it basically means you get money by putting money in the bank, okay? It's very small. It's usually like 5%, 3%. But to me, that's worth it. I don't see it and it's growing monthly. So I feel good about that. But do your own research. Obviously, each country has different banks and, you know, just my biggest tip is separate your accounts, okay? Even if it's cash and you put it in a fucking safe, that's better than putting it in your regular bank account because you won't be tempted to spend it if you don't. Another tip for money goals is setting up automatic withdrawals. 
if it was someone that has a consistent paycheck and you get paid a consistent amount per month, I would totally do this. I would set up like $100 a week or $200 a week withdrawing from your regular bank account to your savings bank account, okay? I know it's complicated to have two bank accounts and you're like, Jade, this sounds harder, but trust me, it's a lot easier when you know your money is going somewhere where you're not tempted to save it and you feel you feel good about it and you don't have to think about it, okay? All right, so let's, start. let's go into my next section, which is money tips. So these are just overall savings tips for you guys. I hope this three-step system helps you get started. Uh, now, to be a pro, here are kind of like my top four tips when it comes to saving money. My first tip is the 50-30-20 savings strategy. So this strategy is very popular. It's one of my favorites because it's super easy to remember. Basically says every page you get, you want to spend 50% on essentials like rent, food, 30% on non-essentials like clothing, gym membership, etc., and 20% on savings. The emphasis here is not on the 50-30. I don't think it matters what ratio you spend. I think the most important thing is 20% to savings, okay? In the US, that's a good number because A, 20% is usually for taxes. If you're self-employed, like that's a good start. Probably more if you live in a higher tax state. Obviously, you don't need to get fancy with it. But for me personally, I always put 20% to taxes. I put 30% usually to my money goals and then 50% for my life. Okay, so I use a different kind of strategy with the same ratios. Try this out, and if you're like, hey, Jade, I kind of need this 20% to pay for my essentials. Like, I can't afford to save that much. I think this is a great opportunity to look at your money values and see where you can kind of source money from, right? So I think that's where you can go back to step two, kind of reevaluate your budget, reevaluate what your money values are, and then see where you can source the 20%. Surround yourself with friends who have the same goals as you, okay? I used to be friends with people who were really, really, really frivolous, okay? They love to spend money. I just wasn't there in my life. That is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But it was a bad influence on me, right? So hang out with friends that are on the same playing field, okay? It really helps you kind of not be tempted to spend money. And also, frankly, it's, it's easy to get jealous. It's easy to get compare yourself. So not to say you can't surround yourself with people who are making more money. It's just easier when you guys like the same things, you spend the same money, and you're not tempted to go spend a million dollars at Dior one day. You know what I mean? <laughs> my third tip is to find cheap hobbies. I think one of my expensive hobbies is like probably snowboarding. Like you have to get an Airbnb, you have to buy the ski lift, you have to get all the clothes. Like it's very expensive. That's why I really like surfing because you can get a used board for like 80 bucks on a basic marketplace and then go to the ocean for free, basically. Find cheap hobbies that allow you to still enjoy your life, but still achieve your goals. There are ways to still have fun, but still hit your goals. Like for me, I really love surfing, board games, and thrifting. Those are all things. And like window shopping. Honestly, window shopping is really fun. As long as you have good self-control, I feel like window shopping is awesome because you just look at things, don't buy them, and then go home. <laughs> all right, my fourth tip, setting up money dates. I think where people get really, really anxious about money is because it, ha it has to be this stressful thing where you're at your desk for 10 hours looking through your bank statements, beating yourself up for spending money, right? What if managing your finances was fun? It was an enjoyable experience. I did this thing where I set up money dates with myself once a week where I look through all the things I spend in a week. I look at my money goals. I see where I need to be. And it's an hour once a week. I have a little hot chocolate near me or like a tea. And it's a fun experience. I blast some music, okay? I vibe out. I give myself one hour to do so. I can dip out after. And it's like a little date with myself, okay? Make it a vibe. I'm telling you, this is like one of the game-changing tips that I don't see a lot of people talking about. The reason why you're intimidated with money usually is because you have a negative experience around it through childhood or you're just used to seeing a very stressful image of managing your finances. Like I remembered when I grew up, like, I associated money through like being stressed with paying bills because I saw my parents that way. But as I grew up, I learned it doesn't have to be that way, okay? It can be fun. It can be lighthearted. It can be a vibe. So try a money date out and comment below if you do that or you can DM me once you do this and let me know your thoughts. That is all I have for this week's video. I hope you like this content. Comment below at Darwin Asian if you made it to the end because that would be crazy. I really like making vlogs for you guys, but I know you guys love the sit down videos. So let me know if you have any other video suggestions. Let me know if this video is helpful. I love you guys. And um, feel free to comment below your guys' money goals so I can learn more about what you guys are up to and we can all keep each other accountable. 
Darmination, I love you. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode.